Um, Adam, I mean, you know this space really well. I mean, what's the, what to make of it in a big picture sense where these companies are kind of trying to, I guess, go closer to the end user in terms of the AI capabilities? NVIDIA yesterday with the PC uh, chip development news as well. Yeah, look, I mean, we're in the early phases of a 10 to 20 year trend and you it's going to be a trend that's going to help um, compute grow and you're going to have semiconductors at the center of it. So it's not, NVIDIA will, will be best positioned and will do the best over time, but there, there are multiple aspects to it and a lot of co uh, competition. I think the easiest thing to say is everyone wants to compete against Intel because they've been basically, let's say, the single worst steward of capital of any public company in the last 25 years and mm -hmm. on top of it, hubristic. So it's been very easy to go in there and gain share from them. And uh, I'm not surprised to see NVIDIA mention that yeah. yesterday as a, basically a superior company over the last you know, 10 plus years at a minimum. I think some of these other things on the phone, we'll have to see at, at what the comp, uh, competitive landscape looks like. But obviously, you know, um, you know, there's a number of companies that will be participating. Yeah, at some yeah. level, you feel like, you know, the added capabilities are kind of table stakes. I mean, the things always get better. They right. always get faster. So I'm not sure, you know, where the incremental share gain comes from that because somebody gets priced away. But I think it's fair to say if you came into this year thinking the semiconductor industry grew nominal GDP plus a couple, that, that number is now a nominal GDP plus four or five just because Compute's going to gain share of the total bill of materials for almost all these devices. Mm -hmm. And I think that's partially why these things are trading at, at higher multiples because their long-term growth rate is just going to be higher. You know, there's a way of telling the story of this year in the markets in general. A lot of people are saying it this way, which is, you know, you more or less had just kind of a, a sort of a bear market rally or a very strong rally off the lows a year ago. And then beyond that, everything else has kind of rolled over, whereas you've had the AI storyline or anything that touches AI and mega cap uh, yeah. tech has managed to keep things going. We know this, right? Um, first of all, if that's true, uh, it would seem to at least allow for the fact that the rest of the stocks, if not to carry the market, that there have to be some opportunities or at least some bad news already priced in on those levels. I think that's true. I get that question a lot uh, more of like, hey, can we give a broadening rally? Right. Hey, small caps look super cheap versus large cap. If you look at our last couple of weeks we've written about this, I just don't think the small caps are that cheap because when I parse it out by growth versus value, growth looks a little expensive for both small and large, value looks cheap for both. When I parse it out by quality, the mega cap quality are just much better than the small cap quality. They generate more free cash flow, they have higher margin, they command an asymmetrical higher multiple. So I don't think you get that broadening rally until we're closer or you know more in the downturn. Mm -hmm. You know, when when I don't know, you know, the old blood on the streets phrase, like you really need to have things much worse, then you could dream that their margin expansion that after that will be better. In the interim, I think the big guys, we'll see with some of them in an hour or two yeah. here, are probably going to have just as good results, if not better, than the small caps. And what makes small caps work is their margins go up more. So which is it? Is it labor? Is it materials? Is it depreciation? Is it pricing and mix? None of that looks like a great cocktail in the next quarter or two on a relative basis. So I'm in the camp that the market goes up and the big seven participate at least pro rata. At yeah, least that's my view. It's pretty hard for it to be yeah. otherwise. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's mathematically. For yeah, yeah, agreed. Uh, let's bring in CNBC contributor Bryn Talkington of Requisite Capital Management for more on this. And Bryn, um, just in general, I mean, I know you're an owner of, the, of things like what Microsoft and NVIDIA. Uh, how do you think they are positioned as we're about to get this latest little update of fundamental news? Well, I think when I start with the, the technicals, if you just look at the NASDAQ, the NASDAQ is firmly below both the 50 and the 100 day and continues to make those lower highs and lower lows. So technically, the NASDAQ in general doesn't look good. There's a few standouts like a Google and a Meta, which look the best of, we'll say, the Magnificent Seven from a technical perspective. So I go into Microsoft's earnings today that when you look back the last two quarters, to me, the key word that Satya and team talked about was optimization, meaning that clients have been optimizing um, their spend, meaning to me spending less. While last quarter we definitely saw with Microsoft, the CapEx is picking up, mostly going to AI. And so I think you have this somewhat of a juxtaposition that overall, the, 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 the clients of Microsoft are optimizing while, while, while Microsoft is spending for the future. So they're going to spend more today to try to earn more in the future on AI. So I know that the street's looking for about 8.7% revenue growth. I don't think that Microsoft's earnings today are going to be the catalyst to get like the tech trade back up and running. I agree with Adam to say if we get a fourth, if we get a, like a rally in November and December, I think tech will keep up. But Mike, when I look back, 
Microsoft is flat over the last two years. So although we love to talk about the year-to-date performance of some of these tech stocks, if you held Microsoft from November of 2021 to today, you're flat. So I think mm -hmm. you've really just seen a reversion and a, a kind of a catch-up of being at that high in 2021.